Hey everybody, Shane Speakman, Vice President of UCAS here at Tolaris. And today we have virtually in studio, a staple from the channel, a name who I'm sure you recognize and a face who you recognize, Mr. Olin Scott, who's newly appointed as the head of channels for Nextiva. Olin, welcome back to the channel, my man. Thanks Shane, man. I couldn't be more excited to be back into the channel. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me on today. Of course. Well, we're really excited that you're back in the channel and with one of our very top UC suppliers. And obviously, you've got a very long, tenured, very successful past here in the channel. And so the reason I wanted you to come and talk with us today is as you look at the progression of technology, channel growth, and opportunity looking forward, why was it that you decided to come back into our channel and partner with Nextiva? And then what do you see as some of the trends moving forward? Uh, it's a great question. Um, so it's a great question because I think it's a great um, testament to A, the UC and the CCAS space and, and the next team in particular, because I was probably in as happy a spot as I've been in, right, in a career, which is, and, I've, and of course, I come from the channel. So I've been in a lot of happy places, uh, but things were going really, really well. Um, and I wasn't looking. Right. And Mark Stoll, the president of Nextiva, reached out and, uh, and Mark was on the board of directors when I was at Earthlink and then at Windstream. So uh, there was a professional relationship there and I was eager to hear what Mark had to say. And uh, I'll tell you, you know, he talked a bit about, look, I, I stay close to the business. So I, I knew about all the white space that was left in UCAS and CCAS. There's still a lot of adoption to be done. And there's a lot of uh, innovation and transformation still taking place in that in that uh, industry, which I love. Um, but Mark talked about specifically Nextiva's roadmaps and the things that Nextiva was doing, and he talked about Nextiva's channel centricity, and uh, and so it was it was a it was a really provocative story, uh, and so I you know we we ensued on a bunch of uh, a bunch of conversations. They actually I love this I love that Nextiva quite put me through the ringer. Um, I actually spoke to 13 different people uh, and had 19 different interviews, including the co-founders, including the, the CFO and the heads of marketing, and really you name it, the head of IT and service delivery. And in, and in speaking with every single one of those individuals, 13 different people and the heads of every different functional area, the two resounding themes that came through in every single conversation were channel and customer experience. And I just thought that was fantastic. If you're talking to somebody about a, a channel chief role and everybody up to and including the CFO, right, is talking about the importance and the relevance of the channel and that company's go-to-market strategy, that's what you want to hear, right? So that was a big part of the reason why I came back. I love it. As, as you've seen over the past decade or so, our channel has become much more sophisticated. We have higher expectations and we're involved in much larger deals, which require that extra level of sophistication, understanding of the process and technology. And so when I look at your past with Windstream and Ariaka, and now delving into the UC space, it's interesting to see what changes have occurred in voice, in video, collaboration tools, and then this UC and CC mix to create a CX world. So talk to me about what that particular vertical or practice really endeared you to wanting to become a leader in this space as well. Um, you, I, you know, you almost answered the question in the question, right? which I love <laughs> is that it's, it's seriously, it's seriously, it, it, what, and you're so ingrained to think that way. And that's what I love about it. That's what I love about the channel community because the, channers, the channel is a community of, of trusted advisors that understand that our job is to help really your job, right? My job is to help you. Your job is to help your customers help their customers, right? To help your customers engage with their end users. And so it always is about customer experience. You, it's impossible these days, if you're gonna be wildly successful and you're gonna be impactful, you can't just have a conversation about telephony or communications or collaboration or about contact center. It really comes down to how all of those things play together, right? How do all of those things play together and then integrate with customer platforms to, to deliver a truly meaningful and unique customer experience. Those, look, those, sometimes those just, you know, their, their words and their, you know, their, their punchlines or buzzwords, but that'll truly be what separates the wheat from the chaff in the next several years, right? Is how much are you innovating in a way that'll let you help your customers engage better with their customers? I know it's a mouthful, but like you said, it's all about customer experience, especially now, by the way, I'll opine just for another second on that is as we stare down the barrel of what most prognosticators would say is an impending recession, 
right? You're going to have one of two ways to go engage with your customers. You're either going to be a victim of this recession and people are going to step on you and say, I, I got to reduce my, my rate per minute or my cost per widget, right? Or you can be the one that comes to your customer and talk to them about how you're going to use things like AI, right? And bots. So they can continue to take cost out of their organization, but it's not going to be your cost, right? They're going to spend more money with you to go take costs out of other parts of their organization while still engaging better with their own customer community. I don't know if that makes sense. Sure, absolutely. And since you brought it up, let's talk about some of those macroeconomics in the in the UC space. We, we've seen, uh, if you look back at the markets, the 52-week high for some of these UC suppliers, uh, it, we've mm-hmm. dropped even as low as 85% market value. Uh, we've seen a lot of layoffs. Nextiva did some right-sizing itself not too long ago. Mm-hmm. And so when you when you look at maybe what's causing that or if you look at moving forward, how you see suppliers in general are forecasting or maybe using this opportunity to reinvest. uh, Give me your perspective and what a partner should expect and how this impacts us. Yeah, um, I mean, I address that without opining too much. So first of all, you look at some of the the easily benchmarkable data from the public company standpoint. I think, uh, especially in a world of behavioral finance, sometimes the market has a, can have a tendency to over rotate on a a few things, Um, but it doesn't mean that the market outlook and that that a recession, you know, isn't real. It doesn't mean that that's not coming. Um, But I think it's, it's not so much that this space is going to go backwards or this space is going to stop growing. I think it means that it's not going to grow perhaps at the fever pitch that we anticipated, but it's still a growth story. I mean, that should be, you know, I think that's important to reiterate. In fact, I'll, I'll say about our own, because we did have a, a small reduction and, and uh, or let's say a reduction in force. We're still 500 heads bigger than we were this time last year, right? So we're, that's more than 50% incremental resource, right? To help partners than we had just a year ago. Um, so it's still a growth story, but I think all companies have a responsibility to size for what will the rate of that growth be, um, and if you and, you know if you if you listen to what various or if you read what various um, you know think tanks or consultants or whatever will be, let's pick Gartner right because they're the one that's the most well known. Even they say, hey, despite the fact that this is coming, right, we don't see it hitting IT as much as it's going to hit other organizations because we see other organizations pivoting towards IT as a way to weather this storm better. Right. And so that's why I use the example of, of whether it's whether it's web chat, or text or voice, all of those things can be made better, uh, can be made uh, more predictable, more reliable and at lower cost points with things like artificial intelligence and bots. So, you know, I, I slash we feel pretty strongly that we're going to see a lot of that in the upcoming year as companies try to position themselves to weather a, a bit of a recession. So when you talk about the customer experience or you talk about innovation, I have to think that this thwarts at least some of that with reduction. Uh, And and look, what I love about the channel, what you love about the channel is the fact that our partners are invested in the long-term success with their customers, right? Having led direct organizations, I can tell you that on some level it's churn and burn, not to all extents, but what really stands out about the channel is the amount of care, attention, and forward thinking a partner has, especially in regards to the technology stack for their customers. So how can, right. how can a partner trust when a supplier comes to them and says, we've had a layoff, or we, we, we've we decided to table this technology until another quarter? How, how does a partner reconcile mm-hmm. that and, and give us kind of your advice on you know, what, what forward steps I think a partner needs to at least take yeah so i think look i think um i'm going to speak i can only speak to the next diva lens right and it's a couple week old lens at that but i think um i think you've got to talk i think and this is what partners can do too i think it's reasonable to say show me right show me where you're going show me your roadmap uh do demos for me show me how this works let me talk to customers that are using this already um, you know, when I because like when I speak for us in particular, I don't I don't know that we're necessarily tabling or slow rolling any of our innovation. What we are doing, in fact, we've 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 spent thirty plus million dollars in the last year, um, completely overhauling all of our IT systems and our processes 
which deliver a lot of really tangible benefits to our partner community in the forms of portals and deal registration and self-service tools. So there's still a lot of innovation taking place. Um, I, I think it's reasonable to say, look, when it comes to our partner community, if we if we roll something out or and we spot a gap, right? We spot a feature gap or we spot something that we think isn't, you know, 110% ready for prime time, we'll pump the brakes, right? We'll pump the brakes and we'll go back to the drawing board and we'll make sure we've got that right and hardened before we'll ask our partner community to take it to their customers because that's just the right thing to do, right? Our partners are, are they're selling on their personal brand day in and day out. And the last thing we're ever going to do is ask our, our partners to expose that. Um, but I don't necessarily know that I would characterize any of it as slow lowering the innovation, right? At this point, we had a couple of things where we had to turn back to the drawing board and go, let's, let's, let's sand those edges, right? Before we ask our partners to take this back to the street. I like that. You're being mindful with innovation and mindful with customer support, making sure you're as efficient as possible. Well, I got to tell you, right. if there's one thing that I can tell you, Olin, is our, our leadership, the founders of our company, when they heard that you were coming back and running Nextiva, uh, they could not have been more thrilled. Again, obviously, we do a lot of business together. And when you really break mm -hmm. it down, the channel is built on trust and trusting suppliers and their support and the innovation and that the commitments that they've made are are followed through. And so we're, we're, we're happy to be working with another known entity. So I, I sure appreciate your leadership. Man, I really appreciate it too. I got to tell you, it's uh, while I've spent, uh, it's, I'm going to date myself. I'm one of like the OGs of telecom now. In fact, you can't call it telecom <laughs> unless you're an OG of telecom. But, you know, I've got a 30 year industry anniversary uh, coming up in May. And I spent actually the first 21 years of that on the on the direct side, right? The dark side. And uh, and when I came over uh, to the channel in late 2014, uh, one of my first three or four conversations was actually Adam Edwards. And even then, uh, Adam coached me up because I asked him. I asked a handful of the sort of the godfathers of the space. And I said, look, you know, how do I go be great at this? And one of the things he said was always be mindful of partner lifetime value. He always talked about partner lifetime value and encouraged me to, to work with my finance teams to understand that versus you know, customer lifetime value. And, and I've probably had Adam, uh, I'll bet I've had him speak to every CFO and, and speak on, you know, he spoke at, a, at an SKO, the company I was with a couple of years back, uh, in every role that I've been in, because I've, I have valued so greatly those lessons and they've been a big part of uh, the success that I've been able to enjoy in this space. So I'm super excited to be working with you guys again, and I appreciate you having me here. Absolutely. Well, I think that's it. I think that's all the time we have. Uh, Olin, thank you. Appreciate you. I know you're, I know you're busy, especially uh, ramping up the, uh, for the new year. So uh, again, thanks for, thanks for uh, joining us. Pleasure's mine. Thanks, Shane.